Why wasting money on an electric bike when trash, like love, is all around? I've recently discovered why promoters are awesome. They can be rigged to lift up to 200 pounds and you can get them for dirt cheap at a scrapyard or for free from your daddy's car. So I thought maybe I could strap a few of those on some junk and make it go at 20 miles an hour. This puppy has been my bicycle for decades until a few years ago the front fork bent and I didn't fix it because it's a 30 year old bike but I couldn't throw it away either and I think today is the day she gets a second chance. Have you ever fixed the frame of a bike? Well I haven't but things went surprisingly smooth. It was just a matter of pulling, twisting, spacing. Not that bad is it? And well two braces to keep it in place. Almost better than new. She's back! Now the real work could begin. Wiper motors have torque, but they are slow. 50 RPM times the 6.6 .6 feet circumference of the bike's wheel equals 330 feet per minute. Time 60 minutes equals 3.75 miles per hour. I can walk faster than that. We'll need a gearbox with a speed increasing factor of at least 5.5 to get in the 20 miles per hour ballpark. Let me show you what I got. There is the largest sprocket I can salvage from the bike itself, which has a 48 teeth bike. I also have this rear wheel hub I found on my way to the scrapyard, which has 14 teeth on the top and 34 on the bottom. And of course, the smallest gear on the bike, another 14 teeth. If you want speed, the largest sprocket needs to drive the smaller one. And you get the speed ratio dividing the big number of teeth by the smaller number of teeth. So the big bike sprocket will drive the smaller sprocket on the scrapyard hub and the largest sprocket on the scrapyard hub will drive the smallest sprocket on the rear hub of the bike for a grand total of 5.8. Not bad for a few parts coming out of the trash bin. And since 5.8 times more speed means 5.8 times less torque, I was going to use four motors, but one shorted while I was figuring out the wiring. So we'll use three and we'll power the whole thing with the cheapest 12 volt batteries I could find on Amazon. The plan was to keep... Sorry. The plan was to keep things as simple as possible and to use only the stuff I had around. So I fetched some sprockets, chains and bearings from a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And I machined a single plate for all three motors with the idea of using washers to offset the motors just enough for the chains to clear each other and drive the same axle. But there is a big difference between taking the time to come up with a simple and effective design and being hasty and jump on whatever looks like the easiest solution. And I've been a bit hasty. This is what concerns me, is this axle is eight millimeter, which is roughly a third of an inch. And that's because these bearings were all I had. I had thicker bearings. But I talked myself into believing that machining flanges for those bearings would have taken too much time. So I just ignored the problem and went along rigging the bike to host the motors and the flimsy gearing. It was fine. So fine that it bent like a rotten which is exactly what I deserve. I don't even know what I was thinking putting together the piece of paper. It was literally time to change gear. And come up with a proper design for the driving unit. I'm pretty sure that axle won't bend. I'm even back to four motors cause the one I shortened was still working. If that's not a testament to the reliability of automotive parts, I don't know what is. A few modes on the bike rig to fit the new unit. And it's finally 
time to test what kind of torque we can get out of this thing. <laughs> Let's get this thing on the road. Four miles an hour. Five, six, ah! Okay, I'll have a shot. Kinda works, but. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Thirteen miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the gear keeps shifting by itself. <laughs> Fifteen! Sixteen! <laughs> Sixteen! <laughs> 